Hey guys and welcome to my channel and in this video I just wanted to do some sort of a account showcase to show you how far I've gotten into the game within these past few days and I will also show you guys how I go about doing the different events that they add every day to help you progress your account more efficiently because as time goes by they always increase the level cap they add more events in the game more activities and it can be kind of hard to keep up so I'll be giving you some tips and tricks on how to deal with that so right now early into the game, they will always increase the level cap every day. Now I'm not sure what the level cap is but I'm currently level 30 and my goal today is hit the level cap as soon as possible. Leveling up your character should be your priority because it will make it a lot easier in dealing with the different mobs in the game and clearing the content. And the best way to do that is by doing the main story. So once you log in, maybe you can do your daily quests first over here in this menu. So make sure you complete your daily bounties, you take the food from Mia's kitchen, take your sign-in bonuses, all that good stuff, and you can go ahead and do the main story quest. Because this is the most efficient way in leveling up. It gives the most XP, and by doing the main story quest, you will be able to get the relics that you need for exploration. Because some puzzles require those different relics. Like for example, you will see some of the round metal circles in banjis and you will need to use this strange cube to open them and you can only obtain this by doing the main story quest so i highly recommend prioritizing the main story quest above everything else and at the same time you will get potent omnium crystals which will be used in upgrading your suppressor and this is also important because you need to upgrade this to be able to survive in the next areas because let's say right now i'm in banjis and navia but once I go here, I forgot what this area is called, but some of the later areas will actually damage your character if your suppressor level is not high enough. So it's important to also make this one of your priorities because this will be very important later on in the game. So after my daily quests and my main story quest is over, I always remember to take the free gifts from the carnival over here at this claw machine. You have three different chances to get gifts from this one and you can also go ahead and go to the black market over here and there will be an NPC who will give you a 50-50 chance on getting two more gifts. So if you get lucky, you will end up getting five gifts every day and you can use those gifts to level up your different simulacra. And as you can see here, if you get your simulacra to 200 points, you will be able to get the avatar icon but more importantly once you get them to 1200 you will be able to get a special trait that you can activate so for this one each time subasa deals damage you gain one stack of fierce strike up to one stack per one second each adds 0.5 percent attack up to 15 stacks refreshes effect duration upon gaining the effect again and the effect lasts for 30 seconds so this is really nice because I'm planning to use Subasa as my main damage dealer. And you can take a look on the different simulacra depending on which ones you have. A lot of the simulacras have different traits that can be used in combat. So go ahead and check the different traits in your simulacra roster and see which ones you like the most. And start giving the gifts to the simulacra that has the trait that you want. So after I finish my dailies, my story quest, and after I collect my free gifts, I usually go ahead and clear the zones so what I do is I always say this in my videos I use the interactive map to make it easier for me to know where the items are and I start going for the black nucleus and the golden nucleus and speaking of nucleus my one tip for this is never spend your black nucleus on any of these either the black nucleus or the golden ones because you'd want to spend your nucleus on the limited time banner especially right now the limited time character is nemesis and she's currently one of the best characters in the game and in the chinese version she's still one of the best characters so right now my plan is to at least get 80 pulls to give my shot at that 50 50 if i don't end up getting her beforehand this can be quite a gamble because duh this is gacha but i think it's still worth it because we have a lot of time we have 18 days left and I already managed to get 36 pulls from this. If I keep my pace up, I'll probably be able to get 120 before the banner ends. Because you need 120 to guarantee yourself a copy. And right now, I'll show you guys my weapons. 
So for context, I have been playing this game as free to play 100%. I don't see any incentive on spending because the content is not that hard anyways and I don't see myself competing in PvP that much. So I'm mainly focusing on PvE and clearing the higher floors in the Dimension Arena. So right now I have Subasa's weapon which is the Icewind Arrow on 1 star and I have Thunder Blades at 1 star and Rosy Edge on 0 stars. I think this is pretty lucky for free to play especially since because I actually got 2 SSR weapons from the Black Nucleus Banner which is very very rare. It's already so hard to get 1 copy of an SSR weapon from the Black Nucleus let alone 2. So. I consider this very lucky, although I would have preferred getting a different weapon like King's weapon, but this is good enough. And my end goal for this is something that not most players will be going for, but I'll try it anyways. I'll be going for a tank build, which will consist of Rosy Edge, Nemesis, and I'll be getting Huma from the free SSR box. So that will be a tank build which I know most players will be going for but I already played the DPS for a long time in the closed beta test so I just wanted to try out something different. So as for my matrices, I only give them the basic stuff, the ones that match their element. So this 3 piece increases damage dealt by vault weapons by 6% so that's pretty straightforward. I don't really plan on investing too much on these lower tier matrices because I want to save my upgrade materials for the better ones. But if I'm forced to upgrade these to get my character score up, I will do it. It doesn't matter. I only plan to just have good enough matrices. So this is a good example. So I need a character score of 7100 and right now I only have 6800. So probably I will be upgrading some of these ones. Just enough for me to hit the 7100 mark. For me to be able to upgrade my suppressor yeah that's one more advice that i'd want to give you is that even though it seems like we have a lot of resources at the beginning i recommend saving and having just enough power to go through the content that you're currently doing because later on in the game we're not sure if it's gonna be hard to get those materials or how long will it take for us to get those so it's better to be safe than sorry so i recommend having just enough because this game is pretty easy anyways at least early game and for the next one the things that i do when i'm not actually going around the world and collecting nucleus because sometimes it gets a little bit tiring and i just feel too lazy to go around especially since not all of the chests are open even if i go around the whole map today I won't be able to collect all of them so I might as well go back when all of the chests are open if you get what I mean. And when I'm not actually collecting stuff around the world, I personally have a bucket list of things that I want to do, things that I want to get in the game. Like for example, I just recently got this vehicle. So this is the chaser that I recently got. I had to farm the Fermin brothers which is in this location. I'll put up a picture right on the screen where you can find them. And basically you just have to kill those to get the drop. And luckily it only took me like I'd say 6 hours collectively to get the piece for the vehicle. The next thing that's on my bucket list is I'm actually planning to get the mechanical arms. So if I remember correctly you will have to do hidden quests and you have to go to certain locations with passwords to get the pieces. But I think it's pretty simple. You will find a lot of videos on YouTube showing you how to get the different pieces. So yeah, that's the next thing I'm aiming for. And aside from that, I don't really spend too much time in Tower of Fantasy. Because for one, I already have somewhat of an idea of what to do. And it's like second nature to me. Because I've been in the closed beta tests and did all of this beforehand. And secondly, I don't want to burn out. Yeah, this game is fun and all, but personally, when I spend too much time in the game, it kind of feels, even though it's not repetitive, it starts to feel that way if I spend too much time on it. I'm not sure if you guys get what I mean, but that happens to me in a lot of games. I don't want that to happen in Tower Fantasy because I actually enjoy playing the game. So I want to have fun in the longest time possible. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, 
feel free to leave it down below. I'm more than happy to read your comments and answer them. And with all that being said, hopefully you guys found this interesting. And thank you for watching. And then I'll see you on the next one. Peace.